Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make a canopy bed. Today we're gonna be making a new bed for my daughter. Unfortunately, my daughter's room also acts as the guest room and we have friends and family in town, so she gets kicked out. But the upside of that means that she gets to sleep in a queen size bed. So far, it's been a hand-me-down queen size bed, but today we're gonna make a new one for her based on what she wants. She wants a four poster, with some flowy curtains and some cool lights. This thing's gonna be made almost entirely from plywood and I got a lot of cutting to do, so let me rip that down and then I'll show you the design. I wanted this whole thing to have some really thick posts up in the top, but I also wanted it to be accessible for people who wanted to make it. So each one of these two and a quarter posts is actually gonna be made out of strips of plywood laminated together. Then we're gonna add some veneers along the faces where those different plies line up. So it'll look like a solid piece of wood. We're gonna have these four posts with a frame around the top and then some storage underneath each side. So we're gonna have three drawers down here. And then up in this top section, we're gonna add some cool lighting because my daughter loves to sit in bed and read. And luckily, this video is sponsored by the makers of Sylvania General Lighting. They're gonna give us some awesome bulbs to use and we'll talk more about those later. We are gonna have some plans available for this bed if you wanna make your own, but we also have an online course to teach you Fusion 360 in case you wanna design your own furniture and make your own plans. We'll have a link to both of those things down in the description. I wanted the beams for this bed to be about two and a quarter inches square. Unfortunately, we couldn't find material that was that size here locally. That's why we're using plywood to make those beams up. So we've got pieces cut down to the right thickness, and then we've got three of them stacked up so that it all matches. And now we just have to glue all these together to make beams. The good thing about using plywood is that all of those different layers stacked together are gonna make it really strong. It shouldn't droop over time. And we're gonna do the same thing for the side panels, and this is where the slats are gonna sit. So we got these two pieces here, and then this bottom piece will go on here. All of the slats are gonna lay on top of that. And so this should be plenty strong to support the weight of the mattress and the people on the mattress. Plus we're gonna have a center divider that's gonna help support the weight. Basically, we've got a whole bunch of glue up to do before we can start putting this thing together. I've got a lot of these pieces glued up and I am gonna put on some screws in one place I wanted to kind of point that out. This piece is the side rail and the slats and the mattress and all that weight is gonna be sitting on top of these. So I went ahead and put in some extra screws just to reinforce this piece. Those things are also gonna be sitting on a center support. So I'm not worried about them going anywhere but this is a little added security. I've got a few of these beams glued up and you'll notice here that there's actually a gap and that's because the next beam that attaches to this is gonna slot in there. We've got kind of a mortise and tenon thing going on. We have a little spacer piece made to be able to get all the pieces in the right place to make sure that everything's gonna line up. In the same way, the footboard is gonna be done where there's a big panel and then there's a piece glued on the front and on the back to get this same thickness. Now in the case of this particular bed, we wanted the design to be nice and clean and modern and simple, but if you wanted to, you could actually change out this panel with something more ornate, or you could add a pattern to the front of it. Easily enough, this is a simple piece that's just sandwiched in between two other pieces. Now that both of these pieces are on, this will be captured in between the uprights on the sides. So the post over here will have a slot in it and will slide right on there and then get glued together. And then the same thing over here. Basically what we're gonna be doing is making the entire footboard assembly, top to bottom, and the headboard assembly. Then we'll take it up into her room and put the whole thing together.
These thicker laminated sections are eventually going to get covered with a wide veneer. We'll glue that on later on. But for now, we also have some thin pieces that we need to cover with some edge banding. And this has a sticky back. We're going to use an iron to put it on. We've got a bits video about this stuff in case you've never seen it and you're interested. Go check it out. We're finally at a point where we can start putting the headboard in together. The whole thing is going to be one big assembly. It's going to have the headboard here, the two tall posts that go up, and then it'll be connected across the top. Now, this is going to be made by stacking pieces like we've done so far. We're going to have a small piece here that's going to fit on the end. Then the headboard is going to sit in this gap right here across both pieces. All that will be glued and nailed together. And once we get that in place, then we'll wait to put on the top once we actually get it up into the room. The entire thing's put together now, except for this top piece, like I mentioned. But once we get this upstairs, we'll be able to slide all of these together like that. Then it can lock in over here. It's just gonna be easier to move it without this in place. But before we do that, we have to add the veneer to all these plywood surfaces. We've got some really wide, long pieces of veneer, so we're gonna have to cut down some strips that will fit perfectly right here, and then we'll glue them in place. Originally I was going to wait and put the top beam on the headboard piece once I got it upstairs and then I realized that I have to finish all the veneers and put finish on it down here. So we're going to add this beam across here, finish up the veneers and then I'm going to put on a couple of coats of polyacrylic on both of these pieces before we take it upstairs and then we'll do the assembly up there. We finally got the headboard and the footboard done, and I wanna go ahead and attach them together with the side rails before I go ahead and put the finish on them just to make sure that everything is right before I start finishing up these pieces. But to put those on, I have to stand these up in the shop and they just barely fit. So now we need to get them correctly spaced and then put in the side rails, and those are gonna be attached with some brackets that we have so that you can take those pieces on and off so that we can assemble this in the room. This is the hardware that we got for this. These will go on the side rails, this will go on the headboard, and you can just slot these pieces together. Then the weight of the bed and the slats and all that stuff will hold this in place. This needs to go right here on this piece. And unfortunately, this is the smallest one we could get. It's a little bit too tall. All we have to do is chop out this piece right here so that this bracket can mount right down in there and be flush with the top. We need to get those side rails put on and they need to be perfectly in line with this section. I drew a line here at the bottom of that piece, but I'm also gonna clamp on a piece of material and that'll act as a shelf. That way I can set the side rail right on top of it, clamp these two pieces together and then put on the hardware in the right place. The 
way this hardware works is that this piece on the rail slots onto these screws and then drops down, but they don't line up on the bottom. You just want them to completely bottom out so that it's locked into place. So what I'm gonna do here is actually figure out where this whole piece needs to go together. I'm gonna mark the outside line and then take it off and just put this one on first. Once that's in the right place, then I can move the rail, drop the hardware in place, put the rail back, and then screw the rail and the hardware together. To get these holes in the correct place, I'm gonna use a self-centering drill bit. It's got a little collar on it, and it'll center within that area, and then when you push in, the hole will be directly in the center. Got the frame put together, and the next thing is to add a center support down the middle. This is gonna be at the same level as these side supports so that the slat can sit on all three of these pieces and be supported all the way across. We're gonna do that by ripping down a piece of two by four and putting some simple legs down to the ground. I could use the part that I ripped off of that 2x4 for the legs and it would work just fine, but I think I'm going to use a fresh 2x4 so it's wider, that way there's a little bit bigger of a foot that's touching the ground and transferring the weight down. To make sure that the center section is removable, I'm going to use some pocket hole screws on the sides to attach it to the headboard and the footboard. For the slats in the bed, we're going to use these furring strips. Now these are really inexpensive and they work just fine. I've used them in a lot of different beds. The big important thing here is not to measure these all the way from edge to edge of the rails. You don't want them to touch the outside because then when you move around on the bed, they'll kind of squeak and rub with the end grain on the wood. So just cut them a little bit short and make sure that you have the spacing less than two and a half inches between each one. The last thing to put together here is the top beams. Now these are gonna go in between the top two corners. I'm gonna show you down here what the plan is. They need to fit exactly in between these and we want them to be removable. So we're gonna put some dowels in the end and then holes up in the top pieces so that they can slide in. Then on the very top surface, put in a pocket screw just to lock it together. That way if we ever need to take it apart, we can take out the pocket screw and then these pieces should just pull out. Now the problem with this is that we actually have to get all the dowels centered correctly up on both of the ends before we can put anything together. We made a little jig to try to help that. This little jig is gonna go on both ends and we're gonna clamp it on. That way the beam can sit right here. So we'll put the dowel centers in here, set the beam in and then push it and that will transfer the marks of these holes onto the end of the beam. We'll do that on both ends and then we can drill all the holes and put in the dowels.
So the whole point of doing this is so that we don't have any hardware exposed on the outside of the bed. I'm trying to keep it as clean as possible and keep all the fasteners hidden. This way, this piece can seat onto the inside and then you can drive in the screw to draw them together and make sure that that joint is gonna be nice and strong. And obviously this is not meant to be like a monkey bar situation. We don't want the kids playing on this and hanging from them. And that's why we're gonna add lights on the inside so that this is not just an exposed piece out there for them to jump and hang from. Now that we've got the bed in place, the last big thing is to add some lighting to the ceiling. And this is gonna go right over the pillow so she's got a really nice reading light. And that brings me to the sponsor of this video, the makers of Sylvania General Lighting. These are the best alternative to natural light because they mimic the natural spectrum with true wave technology. It's a broader spectrum of color than you typically find in an LED bulb. And that's true whether you're talking about the soft white or the daylight because these do come in a 2700 and 5000 K light color. They feature less intense blue light, which reduces eye strain, so it's great for reading, but also helps support an improved sleep-wake cycle. And that's awesome for my daughter's quality of sleep. They also give you a more realistic view of the colors in your space, so it just makes the room look better. One of the coolest things about these bulbs is that they dim really well. If you've ever used an LED bulb, you know that they oftentimes don't do really well when you dim them, they kind of flicker. These don't do that. That's really important here because this light is a full room light, but also needs to be dimmable, so it's less intense when she wants to read. Like I mentioned before, these bulbs come in both daylight and soft white, but they also come in frosted and clear, depending on what you need. If you want to find out more about the natural series of LED lighting, hit the link down in the description. Here it is, the finished bed. I'm pretty happy with it, but more importantly, my daughter loves her new bed and that makes me super happy. If you wanna make one of these for yourself, we're gonna have some plans available, but not just queen. We're gonna have a king, queen, full, and twin size set of plans. If you wanna check those out, hit the link down in the description. Also, big thanks to the makers of Sylvania General Lighting for providing the natural series LEDs for this. They really make the colors in here pop and we're super grateful for them sponsoring this video. We've got tons of other types of projects that you may wanna check out and if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that as well. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Here it is, the finished bed. <clears throat> well, it's about right. You got about the right stick out. Done. Then to attach this section to the headboard and the footboard, we're gonna put some pocket holes on the side. That way we can attach it. <laughs> <laughs> uh.